Good morning, church. Good morning. I'm going to say, always be ready. <laughs> I'm ready. You have to be ready. <laughs> but to God be the glory. We have much to give God thanks for. And so this morning, I'm just going to bless your heart. The singing the song every day is indeed a day of thanksgiving. And I'm sure that we all can agree with that because we are here this morning. Breathing and alive and well. Every day is a day of thanksgiving. You know God's been, God's been so good to me. And every day, every day is blessing me. Every day is a day of thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Every day we ought to thank God for his mercy. Every day we ought to thank God for his grace. We ought to thank him for his favor. We ought to thank him for keeping us. We ought to thank him for being our rock, our fortress, our strong tower, our shelter in the time of storm. 
Every day we ought to thank him for being our provider, our healer, our deliverer, our way maker. We ought to thank him for being our God, our light in this dark world. Yes, every day should be a day of thanksgiving. And now, Father, I ask that you would anoint my lips so that I may speak, Lord God, what you have given unto me. I pray, God, that as your word would go forth, it would touch hearts and lives, and that it would not return void unto you. And Father God, I pray right now that your blessings will arrest upon all those under the sound of my voice. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. The psalmist says, oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercies endures forever. Can I tell you that the best thing that you can do is to start your year with thanksgiving. Our focus should always be on God. Nothing else, no one else. Our eyes should be fixed on him. Our mind should be centered on him. You see, when you've got your mind and your heart wrapped up in God, then there ain't no room left for anything or anyone else in your life. The Bible is filled with scriptures about giving God thanks. And I want to share just three, just three out of the many, many, many that is found in the Bible. And, and these are, are, are familiar uh, verses of scripture that I am sure that all of us know. Paul says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 18, Paul says, in everything, not something, he says, in everything, give thanks. Why? For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Then in, in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 20, Paul goes on to say again. He says, giving thanks for all things. Now that's at least twice we are hearing Paul saying, thanking God. We will thank God for all things. Thank God for everything. And these are not the only two times in the Bible that we are encouraged to thank God for all things. It means that we are to thank God for the good, the bad, and the ugly. But you know, we are people who, we, we are used to thanking God when things are going good. When things are going the way we want it to go, we don't have a problem of expressing our thanks to God. When we have come to church and we're feeling good, when we know we ain't got no problems, when we know that ain't nobody running after us for anything, when we know that uh, we ain't doing nobody no harm, and when we come to church, we are feeling so good, we can thank God, we can praise Him. But when we come and we know that we got problems, you know, we drag ourselves through the door, we sit down and we don't want to get up. We don't want to stand up when it's time to stand up. We don't want to sing when it's time to sing. You're not even listening and participating in the service because your mind is all wrapped up in the troubles and the situations and everything that is going on in your life. Therefore, in times like that, we don't think about praising God. We don't think about giving God thanks. But it's important that we thank God, not only in the good times, but we learn to thank him in the bad times. Why? Because the word of God tells us, and God gives us the promise, he says, I am with you always. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So if he's not going to leave us, it means that he's there with us when things are going good and he's also there with us when things are not going so good in our lives. In Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6, Paul says, be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. Don't worry about anything. Don't stress yourself out about anything. 
but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. You don't just say, God, I need this. God, give me that. God, I want, I want you to do this. No, we don't just go to God with that kind of an attitude. But what Paul is saying that we ought to go to God with a thankful heart, a heart that's praising him. Thankful because of all that God has done for us. Thankful most of all for who God is. Paul says, let your requests be made known to God. In our Old Testament reading this morning from the book of Jeremiah, we hear the Lord himself encouraging the people of Israel to rejoice. The Lord says, sing aloud. <clears throat> sing aloud with gladness. Give shouts of praise. Uh, it's, it's hard for me to get some folks to, to, to sing loud. It's, it's hard for me to get some folks to, to do some shouting. We, we, we sort of reserved and bashful. We don't, want, we don't want to do that. But sometimes I wonder how is it that we can give shouts and how we can be so loud and so boisterous when there's a political rally. You all know about that, right? I've been there many times. I, I've seen those things happening. There are certain places and we can go and there are certain times that, that we are we can you know be a part of that we are so boisterous and then when we get into the house of the lord it's like what happened to the energy where, where did it go what happened to the joy that we are to what we should be having when we're in the house of the lord how is it that we're not able to express that joy the children of israel were in a difficult place when, when, when the Lord gave Jeremiah these words to write, they were in a difficult place. They were going through some very difficult times. According to the scripture, they were in exile. In other words, they were in another person, another people land. And it was God who had allowed them to be there. They were in the enemy camp. They had to take up residence in the enemy camp. They had to build homes in the enemy camp. They had to get married and have children and, and raise those children in the enemy camp. They had to worship God while they were in the enemy camp. And so they were in a difficult place, in a difficult season and time. Yet God is saying to them, don't be concerned about what you are experiencing. Don't be concerned about where you are. But he says, sing. Sing, be glad, and give shouts of praise. You see, even though the Israelites were God's chosen people, they needed to be constantly chastised because their heart craved idols and idol worship. Their hearts crave that rather than Jehovah God. Now, don't get me wrong now, they loved what God would do for them, but that did not curb their lust for paganism. And so God allowed them to go into exile for 70 years. But they went with the promise that after 70 years, they would be free. I want you to know this morning that God knows all things. And God knew that at the end of the 70 years, his people would be free of their craving for idols. Their hearts and their minds would not long for paganism. God told them to sing. God told them to be glad. God told them to shout. God told them to praise him and to be thankful. There is a message in this for us today. To be thankful. To be thankful for God has brought us through. Be thankful because we never would have made it on our own. To be thankful because you are here and many others are not. 
to be thankful because of the promise the Lord gives us. When you go back to chapter 29 of the book of Jeremiah, we read there in verse 11 to the beginning of verse 14, familiar words that all of us have heard before. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord. And many times when we look at that portion of scripture and we use it, and we comfort ourselves with it, and we apply it to our lives, we think, of the, uh, uh, we think and we say, well, God says, I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you. And we stop right there. And we say, God has promised me riches untold. I don't need to be a pauper. I have riches. All I've got to do is go and find it. God got it there for me. Or I just got to sit back and God is going to drop it in my lap. But that's not what the scripture is telling us. This scripture was given first and foremost to the Israelites. They were held in captivity. They were in exile and God says to them, I'm sending you there for 70 years. But while you are there, in that place where you don't want to be, while you are there, I am giving you a promise. And the promise is that after 70 years, I'm going to take you out. I, my promise to you is that while you are there, I want you to know that I got you in my mind. I want you to know that I've only got good things in store for you. I want you to know that I have plans already in place for you. And the plans is that you ain't going to stay there but I'm moving you out. But when we look at the verse of scripture, we take it and use it in the wrong uh, context and not knowing really what it is saying. Now, I hope that when you left all your baggage behind in uh, 2020, and, and you have begun your journey into this new year, I, I, be, I, I pray that you have begun it without the stress and the hassles of last year. You see, old and new can complement each other, but you can't join the two together. You can't marry the two. But the good news this morning is that God has good plans for us. That's what he tells us. He has good plans. Whatever those plans are, they are good plans. Good plans. His plans are not designed to harm us in any way. In any way. We need not fear what's ahead of us. But always remember, God gave you his promises. Why? For greater is he who is God, who is in you, than he who is your enemy that is in the world. If God is in you, God is in you. God is greater than your enemy. God is greater and God has a plan for you and he has a plan for me. You see, the victory concerning your life has already been won. But all we can see when we look at our life, we can see all of the negatives. We can see all of the defeat. We can see all the heartaches, we can see all the struggles, we can see all the pain. Everything that we are experiencing right now, or everything that we have experienced in the past, the devil always brings it up inside of us. So that we find that we can never forget them. We find that we can never put them in the past and focus on the future. That we can never ever give God thanks in all things. But the psalmist says, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he 
is good. Or oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. You know, a lot of people, they hang on to friends. And they say, you know, my friends are good to me. But I want you to remember the story of the, the, the prodigal son. When his pockets were heavy, he had plenty friends. And when his pockets got light, he had none. None. He couldn't find one to give him a plate of food. We need to learn to give God thanks, for he is good. God and God alone. God and God alone. We tend to hold on to people. We tend to big up people. You know, make them feel big and look big in our lives. We tend to worship people, which is wrong. It is God and God alone whom we should give glory to, whom we should give honor to, God and God alone. You are sitting in here this morning simply because of God. Simply because of God. The plate of food you had for supper last night, it was because of God. Not the fact that you had the money to buy the food and say that I buy the food, I cook the food, so I'm going to sit down and eat and enjoy the food. Well, that reminds me of the story of the rich farmer who says, I have all of these crops. And so I am going to tear down my barns, build bigger barns. And I am going to store my crops. And now I'm going to sit back. I'm going to eat, drink, and be merry. For this is what I work for. This is what I earn. This is mine. And then God spoke to him. You fool. You fool. Tonight. Your soul is required of you. He was ready to enjoy life. But he was not ready to meet his God. We ought to do as the psalmist says. Oh give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. Take out your dancing shoes. I'm sure you all got some dancing shoes. Take out your dancing shoes and dance before the Lord. We know how to dance before the world. So why not dance before the Lord? Sing his praises and bless his name. Be thankful for God is a good God. We know not what the future holds for us, but we know the one who holds the future. I don't know about you, I don't know whether you know the one who holds the future, but I know this, you have heard about the one who holds the future. But do you know him in a personal way? He's saying to us, I know the plans I have for you. I love those words. They give me comfort. They give me peace. I know that no matter what hardships or suffering I may find myself in, the promise for me is that God has a plan for my life. And he has a plan for your life. And he will work in our situations. Listen to me. He will work in whatever situations you find yourself in. He will work there to give us a hope and a future. The word of God tells us that all things work together. No matter what it is in your life that you are experiencing, God works in it. God works in it. And he works for our good. I know that when I call on the Lord, he will listen to me. Just as he promised the Israelites. He says, when you call on me, I will answer. But there's not much else that can be better than that. I don't expect God to make my life easy. You shouldn't either. But I expect God to be with me as I contend with life on this crazy earth. I expect God 
to be with me. Why? Because he has given me that promise. God has promises to bless us. Even as we face trying and difficult circumstances and seasons of life. He may not remove them from our lives. But if we would remain faithful to him. If we would be obedient to his word. If we would trust him. He will take us through. So this morning. Lift your heart and your voice in thankfulness to God. For God has truly been good to us. And always remember, it wasn't you, but it was God. Every day is a day of thanksgiving. Blessing me over and over, keeps blessing me.